Yes, I know that my Redeemer lives. A very good morning to every one of us. Good morning, morning Father. Pray. We want to step into the presence of God and pray this morning. Let us pray. Grant, we beseech thee, O Lord, that we, your children who gather this morning and daily, may believe in your Son, Jesus Christ, whom you have sent into the world. Grant that, O God, we may join those whom you have chosen and those who have opted to serve you that, Lord, we may proclaim to the world that Jesus is Lord. He has died, he has risen, and he will come again. Grant us that this message of ours, we may believe and teach the world to believe same and truly. For we make our prayer through Christ our Lord, amen. Amen. Wednesday of the fourth week of Easter, our gospel is John chapter 12, from John chapter 12, verse 44 to 50. The theme is, whoever believes in me, believes not believes not in me, but the one who sent me. I take the reading. Jesus cried out and said, whoever believes in me, believes not only in me, but also in the one who sent me. And whoever sees me, sees the one who sent me. I came into the world as light so that everyone who believes in me might not remain in darkness. And if anyone hears my words and does not observe them, I do not condemn him. For I did not come to condemn the world, but to save the world. Whoever rejects me and does not accept my words, has something to judge him. The word that I, sp I spoke, it will condemn him on the last day, because I did not speak on my own, but the Father who has sent me commanded me what to say and to speak. And I know that his commands Commandment is eternal life. So what I say, I say as the Father told me. Beloved, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Just a moment of silence over God's word for this morning. Arise, Catholic faithful, rejoice and renew. In case you might miss a phrase, you may want to look out for the very first sentence that shows on the screen. John chapter 12, verse 44, the very first sentence or phrase, Jesus cried out. Jesus cried out. We notice that Jesus cried out. This expression is used again in John chapter 7, verse 28, and John chapter 7, verse 37. During the feast of the dedication, Jesus cried out. Can you imagine Jesus crying out 
For, I think we may want to shout, we may want to look at it again when Jesus was on the cross in John chapter 19. He cried out and said, my God, my God, why have you abandoned me? So Jesus cries out like that. It means to shout in a loud voice. It is more than, sim than simply a teaching. It is an exhortation of strong appeal to his hearers so that all of us may pay attention to the truths that are about to happen. He did not want those who are listening to him to miss it. Neither does he want us to miss the message. Today, you want to ask yourself, what am I doing that Jesus will be crying out? A mother who is walking with the child by the roadside will shout to the child and say, my son, it's because he wants the child to pay particular attention. Jesus cries out. Yet, his crying out would not be something that we would pay much attention. Did you know that this is the last time Jesus will cry out to those who do not believe? Listen to this. A wife was in the house with her husband. All of a sudden, she, oh, I mean, as they were there, they received a letter. All of a sudden, she shouted or exclaimed, the bank says that this is our last notice. Isn't it wonderful that they are not going to bother us anymore? Really? Her understanding of final notice was that no more bother. Is that the way you also understand it? If this is the last warning to you, does it mean that after this freedom, it is never wise to ignore final notices? This is true of anyone who, anyone who receives a bill, but especially when the word of God is telling you that this is your last warning. It is never wise to ignore God's final notice. You may think that it is wonderful that God won't bother you anymore. But as St. Paul says to the Athenians, God has fixed a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness through a man whom he has appointed, having furnished proof to all men by raising him from the dead. God has fixed a day in which he will judge the world. Acts chapter 17, verse 31. Therefore, when the final warning comes, it means that judgment is very near. And today, Jesus gives a final warning. So when he says this final warning, to whom? Our gospel today presents Jesus or represents Jesus' final warning to those who do not accept him as God. You may think that it is some people, but I tell you, we are all guilty. How much do you believe that Jesus is God? How much do you truly believe that Jesus is God? We do not know when he spoke these things. You know, when Jesus says, or when your doctor tells you something, you believe. When your lawyer tells you something, you believe. When the Google tells you something, you believe. But when the Bible says something, when Jesus says something, that one, then it is a problem. We do not know the occasion that in which Jesus spoke these words, but we clearly know that nothing that he said in today's reading is something that we have not heard before. Therefore, we need to think about his words. 
His last words are to the unbelieving Christ, uh, unbelieving Jews before he is crucified. So this, after this, Jesus will not speak again to the Jews. He will not teach them properly. He will just have that final, you know, um, when they will be interrogating him. But as a teaching, no. John chapter 12, verse 50 will end that final notice. Since this is the final notice of Jesus, it is, it is good to notice what he says in the whole reading from the 44 to the 50, which can be summarized up in these words. Believe in me because I am, I am one with the Father. I am the light. My words will judge all that reject me. And, that, and I speak the Father's commandments. That is eternal life. Hmm. This is the four words put together in one. Let us look at, let us look a little bit at them. One, Jesus says, believe in me because I am one with the Father. John chapter 12, verse 44 and 45. This is the summary of what you find there. Jesus is one with the Father. If you believe God, you must believe him. This is why you ask ourselves, do we worship the Holy Communion? Yes, because it is Jesus himself. Yet we say it with our lips, but our, our actions don't portray it. Jesus says, believe me because I am the light. It was at the feast of light, yet the people were in darkness. It was during the Easter season, yet a lot of people are still in Lent. My dear friends, think about this. Believe in me, the third one, because to reject my words means that you will face judgment on the last day. How much of the word of God do you believe? Do you read the word of God with love and passion daily? Or is it just you go to listen to some nice reflection and then afterwards passes here and goes away? Jesus, uh, God's word in John, in James chapter 1, verse 24 following, says that wise is the man who looks at the mirror. And when he puts the mirror away, he remembers how his face looks like. Wise is the man who hears the word of God. And not only hears it, but believes and does and believes and he puts it into practice. Do you look at the word of God, take it away, and your life is the word of God? The fourth one, he says, believe me because I faithfully give you the Father's command, commandment that is eternal life. This is, a sure, this is an assurance that anyone who believes in him will have eternal life. For as many as believed in him, he gave them power to become the sons and the daughters of God. I began by a story of the first notice. So we shall end with a story of a second notice. A man received a second notice from the IRS that his tax payment was overdue and that unless it was immediately forthcoming, he will face legal action. He hurried to the IRS office with his payment in hand and said, I, have, I, I would have paid sooner, but I never received the first notice. Well, we, we are first notices. I'm sure some of you never received it. But just for our relaxation, listen to what the clerk says. The clerk replied, Madam, we ran, uh, sir, we ran out of first notices. 
Besides, we discovered that the second notice are much more effective. Are you waiting for the second notice? It may, may not be much time. For Jesus today, it is the final notice. It is, it is a call to believe in him for the salvation, for salvation before that coming last day. Don't ignore this. Jesus is the only and the savior of the world. God richly bless you. Amen.